Think about what it means to have better stuff. So imagine this, you're a kid again and it's Halloween and you have big important plans to go trick or treating with a friend and you are focused, like Olympic gold medal focused on two things. One, your costume is gonna be far more impressive than your friends and two, you're gonna blow this unofficial candy competition out of the park. You both agree to take different routes around the same neighborhood and meet at the end of the street to compare your winnings. I mean, it's all strategy. You have to know where to go. You have to know who's handing out the stingy one pieces and who's throwing out handfuls. You feel sorry for your friend already. So there you are, meeting up at the end of the street, giant sacks in tow, and as you suspected, yours looks far superior. Being the helpful friend that you are and the clear winner, you spend the entire walk home declaring how you'll show them where to go next year to get better results. You each claim your spot on the floor and dump your haul into a mound for sorting and comparing, but wait, what? Your friend is lining up rows of Snickers and Kit Kats and Twix and even glow-in-the-dark bracelets, and your pile is full of bit of honey, strawberry chewies, and Mary Janes. What even are those? You offer to trade a handful of your squished taffy for a candy bar, but your friend doesn't want a handful of crap any more than you do. This is how kids lose at Halloween. Maybe next year. So what's the moral of the story? Quality will always be better than quantity. Now, maybe you're thinking, well, Mia, what if I had the same chocolate bars and still had all of the tappy stuff, just giving me more candy? To that, I say, what's the point? So you have to go digging through all of the candy that you don't want just so that you can reach the stuff that you love so that pieces of unloved tappy textured corn syrup can fill the crevices throughout your room, making things sticky and bringing in trails of ants. We're trained to think that more is better, but it isn't, is it? Better is better. The same is true with our belongings. When you become a curator and have better stuff instead of a collector, you're able to more easily save space and time and energy and, you know, just have better stuff. No more collecting 15 face lotions so that you can repeat the Goldilocks process every few months. That's right, this one was too oily. This one feels like I'm putting milk on my face. Well, I guess I'll go back to the tried and true that's just right. So let's dive in and talk about how to curate a selective line of belongings for yourself so that you can have better stuff. First of all, it comes down to decluttering by selection. In order to truly curate select belongings and have better stuff instead of a scary conglomerate of things, you'll have to be willing to let some stuff go. Decluttering gives you clarity and it helps you to narrow down items that are currently working for you. So at very least, you're gonna get down to the stuff that's up for consideration. Maybe you're trying to curate a wardrobe of clothes that you'll actually wear. Well, declutter the clothes that you're currently avoiding. Even if you're left with a few items that you're not totally sure about, it's all still part of the process. Now, you may have heard me say this before, but it just so happens that the counterintuitive first step in decluttering anything really is to select the good stuff first. In other words, if you're clearing out an entryway that's been collecting everything from pocket lint to the pair of jeans that you just couldn't bear to take a step further in, you'll wanna start by picking out the keeps first and then go through and clear out the rest. This positions your possessions as potential selections and also happens to go really well with the process of curating a selective line of belongings. So the two really do go hand in hand, decluttering and curating. Just so we're clear, curating is what leads to you having better stuff. So you've selected your keep items and you've chunked the definite no's, but you probably still have some things that you're not completely sold on. This is totally normal and it's the exact reason for this next step, which is to increase your awareness. That is, you wanna increase awareness of your actual usage gather that data. We have the tendency to romanticize how often we actually use something or how much we'll likely use it in the future. After all, this anxiety about the future is typically one of the reasons why people have so much trouble letting go of things in the first place. What if I need it? You know, well, what if I lose weight, gain weight, run out of the other thing? Like, what if royalty comes over to have dinner with me and I don't have the fine china? In general, we humans have an amazing ability to imagine. And the only way to counteract a fantasy is with good data that's grounded in reality. I like to call this heat mapping your belongings. And there are so many ways that you can accomplish this. I've shared it many times here on the channel. You can flip the hangers around in the closet as you wear things or start a new group for products as you use them. For example, all of the facial products that we mentioned earlier can be grouped together into one grouping. And then as you use something, you start a new group off to the side. 
Whatever method you choose, the important thing is that you're increasing awareness and that you're providing visual data of the belongings you own that are actually getting some love and attention. And of course, those that aren't. So what do you do next? Stick with what works, rinse and repeat. Now I get it. It's great to try new things and our joy tolerance is so low. This is why retail therapy has a short lifespan. The dopamine hits are fleeting and it's hard to get that same level of enjoyment out of the same thing for a long period of time. We wanna have better stuff, but we can't seem to break out of this fantasy perception that more is better and less is loss. This is how homes, schedules, and lives get so out of control. We constantly try to change things that don't need changing and add things that don't need adding. I know, I know, things are pretty, they're supposed to be, but just because something's pretty and has excellent marketing copy on the packaging doesn't mean that it's gonna be perfect for you. There are certain products, attire, accessories, etc., that may be all they're hyped up to be and still not work for you. So here's an important distinction. To have better stuff doesn't mean you have to have the best stuff. We generally consider the quote best stuff to be the most expensive, the rarest, or what everyone else is talking about. But that stuff may or may not work for you and you definitely shouldn't own it just because it's supposed to be the best. If you found something that's rocking your world, a product that was made for you, or a snack that always hits the spot, you know, a chair that cradles your butt just right, then stick with it rinse and repeat. What you'll find is that even if these items are more expensive, you're still saving money on a regular basis because you're not buying all of the other crap that's far inferior for your needs. So what about when it's not working? Of course, if something isn't working, then you may need to experiment with other things. And in that case, trying no more than a few new things at a time, because remember, the unchosen items are likely gonna end up being clutter later on down the line. Now, when you think you found a match, give it a little more time, experiment. A huge part of achieving improvement in anything, whether it's a mindset shift for personal growth or a new pair of toenail clippers, is experimentation. Sit with something for a bit. Make sure that it fills all of the requirements for that thing, and then if it does, then stick with it. We wind up confusing our own tastes because we have this persistent feeling of need. So stop being so needy. When you find something that works great for you, start practicing more gratitude and less neediness for the next thing. It's a practice just like anything else, but there's a lot more relief in feeling grateful for those leather booties that scoop your foot just right than there is in feeling this need to buy another pair in a different color. So let me know down in the comments, what are some of the best things that you've ever curated inside of your space? If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, then be sure to subscribe and turn on those notifications. I release new videos every Tuesday, all about creating holistic and clutter-free spaces. And if you need a little boost in creating your own holistic and clutter-free spaces, then I've got you covered with a free guide that's down in my description. I'll chat with you next week.